Great to see a full room here. I'm Mike Rodov, co-founder and CEO of AdNode. I think we skipped the first slide there, but we're focused on accountability for digital marketing. So if that's what you're interested in, you're here. You're in the right place. Um, one, one trend we see in the space is uh, if you're an ad agency, you're, uh, um, here's a chart of the top five publicly traded ad agency holding groups. Profitability per employee is a little bit under $15,000 a year. Compare that to some of the folks who sell ads, uh, much higher profitability per employee. So as an industry overall, um, in a space that many think of as very advanced technologically, actually, there isn't as much technology enablement as one might think. So um, there's a lot of room for improvement, and what this means is there's hundreds of thousands of people involved with paperwork, spreadsheets, and a lot of manual, manual work with campaigns. Um, so what are some of the challenges that create these issues? Um, it's a lot of inefficiencies. So, for example, inefficiencies from inventory reconciliation, taking days for agency teams to go through the reporting and matching it up and verify the invoice as much as it is for publisher teams spending days verifying their uh, their campaigns as well and trying to sort through sort through all the Excel spreadsheets. Second, viewability and ad fraud. Uh, Forrester has an estimate out there, something around 40 cents of every ad dollar is lost to non-viewable inventory, whether that's an ad, you see one third of the ad or you skim through the ad before a second passes. And uh, another 15% is uh, non-human bot traffic and other issues. So large percentage of dollars are just spent very inefficiently. And then third, there's a huge inefficiency from opportunity costs. And what that means is if you're spending your dollars in a place that's not the most efficient place, those are dollars you could have spent somewhere else. Now, if you're finding out three months later at the end of a campaign period, it's too late to go back in time and reallocate those dollars in a better way. So uh, these are some of the examples of the inefficiencies in the space that I think I know a lot of people here have experienced. Um, so uh, if we look at supply chains, um, Many have suffered from inefficiency in their early years, and I think it's important to think of digital advertising as just in its early era. So if you look at shipping as an example, which is a business that existed for many hundreds of years, early on, uh, a lot of ships were lost to, say, shipwrecks or pirates and things like that. And um, one lesson that everybody understands is if two out of your three ships don't make it, the price of the goods sold on the final ship are going to cost more. Right, that inefficiency is priced, priced into the inventory. So the same actually applies for digital advertising. Um, inventory inefficiency creates budget inefficiency. So when so many of those ad impressions are unbilled or unsuccessful, ultimately th that's what your clients are paying in higher prices. So regardless of how you skim the cat, um, sometimes the advertiser will pay for all the impressions, even the unsuccessful ones. Sometimes you have a 70% goal, so we'll pay for up to 70 percent, so long as 70 percent of units are successful, then it's added value. Or the third way is um, our trading desk or somebody, they're buying back the inventory, the client doesn't pay it, but guess what? Either way, that those dollars, that cost is embedded in the price of the successful units. So that inefficiency is what we exist to solve, both from a buyer perspective and a seller perspective. So. Um, what creates this? And um, it's something known as a diffusion of responsibility or a prisoner's dilemma. So brands expect agencies to make sure there's accountability in their ad buys. Uh, agencies expect publishers to make sure that their dollars are being used appropriately according to their insertion orders. And then um, the publishers expect uh, third party ad measurement companies and others to make sure that's the case. So nobody really knows who's responsible. There's so many cooks in the kitchen. That's one of the big problems. Okay, so how does AdNode work? Um, it's a three step process. Step one, you agree to uh, insertion order or a smart contract. Think of a smart contract as an IO that's created in code, not in a PDF or an email or PDF, it's, it's just a digital representation of it, and it's verified on the blockchain after you sign it, so there's a record and everybody can confirm that's what you've agreed on. And in these insertion orders, you're agreeing on the typical terms, such as the number of units, 
the price you're going to pay for each unit, the flight dates, the termination rights, but you're also agreeing to the terms under which you'll pay for inventory. So there might be viewability criteria that somebody needs to look at the ad for a second and 50% of the time or five seconds, right? Um, you might have geo, geo requirements such as the users need to be in a certain country, brand safety requirements of what type of brand safety uh, goals you have or audience verification. So for each IO, you have your unique set of goals and all of that associated with a smart contract so everybody knows, both the marketer and the publisher knows ahead of time which ad units will be uh, paid for and which won't be paid for. So what, what is the definition of success for this campaign? Step two, uh, you're receiving data from your ad measurement partners. Um, so these are uh, typical uh, very large vendors that I, I know some of them are in this room today that might be your viewability provider, your brand safety provider. They send this data in uh, to ad in seconds, so in near real time, and then ultimately that data is verified in the blockchain, so everybody has verified data that they're relying on. And then step three, you have automated uh, reconciliation occurring. So you always have a record of how much is owed to each publisher. Um, there's a final sales receipt available, so everybody knows what's going on. So that's, that's the simple three-step ex explanation. Now, uh, what are the benefits? It's really important to have benefits for both sides, both the buy side and the sell side. Uh, first, uh, from a buy side perspective, um, there's a lot more budget efficiency where you're, where you're marketing. So you're able to make sure that every single ad impression that you pay for is something that met the goals of your contract. Also, if there's certain inventory that's not successful or a publisher or level of targeting that's not working out, you can very quickly use a software to reallocate your dollars. So let's say, for example, there's two $10 CPM programs. One is 50% viewable, one's 25% viewable. Your viewable CPM is actually $20 for one guy and $40 for the other one. If you shift your dollars from the $40 effective CPM to the $20 effective CPM during the campaign, you're basically getting twice as many ads for the same dollars or saving half the dollars. Second part, your receipts are automatically generated, so you don't need to spend days on end um, going through all the different reports, pulling them together, making sure the IO matches, checking with your partners, make sure their numbers are right, going over things by phone. It's all just instantly available to you, so you don't need to do any work there. And then third, from a visibility perspective, you can at any point in time see what's actually going on with any particular campaign, whether it's in regard to viewability or brand safety or the pacing of the programs. And likewise, on the sell side, from an efficiency perspective, if you have an ad unit that you know, needs to be 100% viewable and your 300, 600 is just not making it, you're not finding out three months later, you're finding out within seconds in near real time. So A, you're not, providing a low quality product to the buyer, B, you're not wasting ads um, on a campaign that you ultimately won't be paid for. So you can reallocate those to maybe a campaign that's supposed to be 50% viewable, or if it's not there, take them out, so you're only providing quality stuff. Your teams don't need to waste time in reconciliation, um, and you don't have any client friction around that either. And the third, you have the visibility of what's, what's going well, what's not going well, and you can share that, share that with your clients so they trust you. Now, um, here are some screenshots from the product. Um, here's a comparison. Uh, it says account X1, whatever, but um, if you're connected with those firms, you'll, you'll see, obviously, the names of the publishers. You can see not just the total CPM you're paying, but actually the effective CPM, what you end up saving by not paying for all the ad impressions there in gray. So as you can imagine, very quickly reallocating, not based upon the total bars, but actually based upon the blue bars to get your lowest effective CPM. It becomes a really valuable tool for advertisers and agencies to make sure their dollars are going to the most efficient sources. Um, secondly, automated, uh, you have fully automated reconciliation process. And what's interesting here is you have a transparent reporting. So you always have available reporting that's blockchain certified, uh, literally at the ad impression level. And you can verify this anytime you want. Um, you have your smart contracts that are verified. And what we've done is we've broken this out from the reconciliation process. So you have your reporting, you have your reconciliation, and it's you don't have reporting as part of the reconciliation. They're separate processes. Um, and now you have generated invoices with each of the publishers, and then according to whatever payment terms you have, you can deal with that directly. But what's nice here is we've 
automated the entire reconciliation process that now um, in our, across our industry, there's hundreds upon thousands of people who are involved in this reconciliation process. And I've got to tell you, it's not the most enjoyable part of every one of those people's days. Third, um, insight. Um, you can identify non-billable impressions in near real time. Um, so the blue, the blue bars, those would be your successfully delivered ad impressions. The red, that would be your brand unsafe inventory. Uh, the orange, that's your non-viewable inventory. And what you can do is you can look at across each publisher to figure out what their certified records are. By the way, if a publisher would like, they can actually share their record with you. And the benefit of that is you're not getting a cherry cherry picked PowerPoint, uh, somebody's best numbers ever. This is their blockchain certified numbers, which you basically, it is what it is. So this is a very valuable tool. And, and because everybody knows they, they have a record generated that's certified here, you're incentivized to provide your best inventory to your partners through AdNode. Um, so we have two products. One is uh, called Guaranteed Direct and the other is Programmatic Preferred. So I'll go through the differences between the two. Uh, they both involve a fixed successful price. So what I mean by that is you've agreed on the viewability criteria, the brand safety criteria, if you have audience verification, the audience verification criteria. So you're only paying for ad impressions that meet those goals. That's always there for both. Now, um, in your guaranteed direct deals, the analogy to this is you have a direct relationship, so it's a one-to-one -one relationship between one marketer, one publisher, and it's guaranteed in the sense that you've agreed on the amount, the flight dates, et cetera. You might have termination rights or modification rights and other things, but uh, think of it as a one-to-one -one direct relationship. Um, and then programmatic preferred, probably the best analogy for this is a private marketplace type of experience. And the idea here is you're inviting the publishers. So it could be a thousand publishers, it could be three publishers, so X number of publishers. They can participate in the program. They only get paid for the sex successful impressions. And obviously because you have multiple publishers, you're not guaranteeing to anyone the total amount of inventory. So you can just modify that at any time. Now, um, for the guaranteed smart contracts, um, here is the process. The marketer and publisher agree to successful based advertising orders, and they select the ad measurement companies that are going to provide the validation. Step two, pubs deliver ads. Um, all this happens pretty quickly. Um, ad measurement companies post the delivery data. Third, uh, fourth, the order is reconciled in, real, in near real time. And then uh, fifth, you have ongoing visibility into the publisher's performance and the invoices are automatically generated. So this is how you run direct, direct contracts. Um, second program, programmatic preferred. Uh, this one's pretty cool too. So the agency establishes the smart contract policy. Uh, the ad measurement companies, they're gonna provide a verification around this and the list of approved publishers for that particular order. Um, typically they might use a DSP um, or their trading desk, or if they want, it's not that hard or an algorithm, although it can become more uh, complicated over time. You're setting the pricing uh, for every line item in every, um, in every order and what you're gonna pay. Now, what's interesting here is because you have multiple publishers in the same order, uh, with pricing there, if the pricing makes sense for them at that point in time, their goal is to generate as uh, deliver as many ads as possible. Why do they do this? Because they know there's a finite budget, and the faster I deliver my ads, the larger percentage of, bu of the budget I'm going to earn. So it makes a lot of sense for the pubs to deliver ads very quickly. Now, if you're p what you do is you have verification basically near real time. So you can see how many ads are being successfully delivered. And when your pacing um, is faster than what your budget demands, like so if you're pacing too quickly, you can lower that price. You can very, very quickly lower that price. And when that price is lowered, fewer publishers will deliver and ultimately your pacing will slow down. So what you can do along the way is you can constantly fluctuate the price point to make sure you get the right level of pacing from your successful publishers. Or as an alternative, you can also remove some publishers that might be lower performing. Um, you could expand the publishers. You can make your criteria more stringent. Um, and the idea is that you don't necessarily have this very expensive RTB bidding process. You just have delivery from pre-approved publishers for each, for each order. Um, that's reconciled and there's ongoing visibility in the program. Um, so I think Shaley asked us for a little technical checklist. So here it goes. Uh, number one, it's a very easy to use online platform that 
like the way you fill out the insertion order is just the way you're used to filling it out on a PDF. It's that simple and you can save templates, you can preload the forms, it's super simple. You can obviously also use APIs to directly send in the orders uh, when you have a lot of changes going on. Um, you can integrate your existing ad measurement vendors so you're not relying on somebody like that you don't know to provide the measurement for you. It's kind of like generating your financial reporting and having the auditor be the same company. It's just a little strange. Um, also, some firms are really good at viewability. Some firms are really good at specific types of audience verification, different industry verticals. You can use different vendors, and if those firms ever make a change, obviously, you can always either swap out the vendors or follow that along, but it's not tied to your software. So you definitely want to keep those things separate. Um, next, you can customize your programs. So for example, we had some firms um, that are interested in paying only when an ad is viewed for five seconds or longer, not one second. Uh, people have different standards. Um, we had questions around, can we pay only when there's a lead and provide visibility to pubs around every time there's a lead generated so they can adjust their inventory to give us the inventory that gives us more leads because that's ultimately what our client cares about. So you can set up these programs in very different ways and all you need to do is just change what's in the form. It's that simple. Um, for t um, the blockchain works in the background, so there's no coins. You don't need very. You don't need blockchain knowledge. Um, you can see the hashes for every order. It's very simple to verify if you want to do that. But really, nobody in your team really needs to know about blockchain. That's works in the background. Um, next, uh, the reporting super fast, uh, 15 millisecond data read, and uh, over time that they'll evolve. Um, the validation, we've consistently been able to validate in one second or less. Um, so that's, uh, I think, one of the fastest um, in the industry in terms of how quickly the orders are validated. It's super scalable. We're able to validate 1,500 ad impressions per second per server. So if your client has a $2 billion annual budget, I think it's like four or five servers that you need. So it's not a big deal. And we, we run all of those on Amazon. So it's very straightforward. And finally, um, we have something known as an extract transfer load abstraction layer, which means that um, it, we can connect with APIs in a very a direct way, so we just connect the two variables, so it's a very easy onboarding process, and as we continue to add more vendors with AdNode and run different campaigns, there'll already be integrations available that um, additional firms or different agencies within your group to be able to leverage. Um, and the business case with AdNode, more good impressions with less work, you have budget efficiency, you have operational efficiency, you have visibility, um, they see the green belt, blue belt, black belt. The idea there is when you look at inventory, something called Six Sigma, they have these fancy belts. Um, ultimately, the idea is with, um, with AdNode and using blockchain here and using the accountability software, you can make sure that all the way that you think about buying and selling ads is much like manufacturers think about making sure every single unit they deliver accomplishes their requirements for what they're trying to do. Um, so I want to thank everybody. Uh, I, I'm not sure if we have time for questions, but if you go to adnode.io, um, there's a FAQ section that you can check out there, and uh, we're around. There's a couple people from Adnode here to answer your questions.